his names. Tell him, Father, you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. The beginning and the ending. Immortal, invisible. The all-wise God. The almighty God. The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. The Lord of lords. The Lord of hosts. The ancient of days. The lily of the valley. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we magnify you. What a mighty God you are. What a blessed Father you are. You are the ever-present help in trouble. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. The Alpha, the Omega. The beginning and the ending. The one who was, who is, who is to come. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God, Lord God Almighty, Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. We bow down before you. We bow 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 before you. We worship you. Abba Father, we honor you. We honor you. We magnify you. We say there is no one like you. We say no one can ever be compared with you. Higher than the highest. Bigger than the biggest. Richer than the richest. Greater than the greatest. Mightier than the mighty ocean. We worship you. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. You, you are, are Yahweh. Hey, hey, you, you are. before you we worship your excellency you are our God you are our king you are our savior you are our redeemer the lifter up of our head the horn of our salvation our shield our buckler our rock our strong tower our hiding place we bow down before you glory be to your holy name Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for what you are set to do again in our means today. Thank you for rolling away our pain. Thank you for rolling away our reproach. Thank you for rolling away our grief. Thank you for giving up beauty for ashes. Glory be to your holy name. Father, accept our worship and our praises in the name of Jesus. 
We are gathered before you again tonight on this second day. I ask Heavenly Father, let the heavens be opened. Let there be release of your blessing. In the name of Jesus, every prayer we will pray again here tonight. Father, let the answer come speedily. In the mighty name of Jesus, and as a result of the answer prayer, give your children testimonies. Give power to your word, and let all the glory be returned back to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Everybody, let me hear your amen. amen. Wave your hands to the Lord and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There is someone here tonight. Before the end of this service, you will have a testimony. Amen. I want to find out who is that person. Is it a brother or a sister? Let that person shout hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Choir, thank you. God bless. Please put your hands together for this wonderful choir. Come on. Come on. Thank you. I also appreciate my beloved sister, Sister Bukola Berkis and, his team, and our team. Thank you very much. This is wonderful. May God strengthen you. May God anoint you the more. In Jesus' name. Now help me welcome your neighbor by your right. Say, neighbor, good evening. God will bless you. But surely, my blessing will be bigger than your own. Help me welcome another person. Say, neighbor, good evening. I know God will bless you. But for sure, for sure, my blessing will be bigger than your own. Now, whose blessing will be the biggest? Wave your hand and shout hallelujah. It shall be so in Jesus' name. I appreciate God for your lives, for coming on this second day. I'm trusting God that greater blessing you will receive tonight. Where's your amen? amen. Tomorrow, get yourself ready for anointing service. Anointing to heal the brokenhearted. That's what God laid in my heart. Anointing to do what? Everyone who has been experiencing brokenheartedness, you will be healed. God has promised me that, that tomorrow's anointing service is to heal all manner of broken hearted. Get ready. I believe it is your turn. Amen. You will testify. Amen. The only thing is that my testimony will be bigger than your own. Amen. Who said that? Amen. Let that person shout hallelujah. Amen. Let's go. Genesis chapter 37. Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Chapter 37, I'm reading from verse 29. Remember, we're talking about what? Beauty for ashes. Good. Genesis 37, I'm reading from verse 29. And Reuben returned unto the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said... The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goat and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. Verse 33. And he knew it. And said, it is my son's coat. An evil beast had devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes. That is their father. Jacob rent his clothes. And put sackcloth upon his loins. And mourned for his son many days. And all the sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, what? For I will go down into the grave unto my son money. Thus his father wept for him. And what happened again? And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's 
and captain of the guard. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Chapter 45. Let me show you something there again. Chapter 45, verse 27. Same Genesis. Chapter 45, but this time around, let's look at verse 27. What did he, okay, let's look at it from verse 25. Put verse 25. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. Uh -uh. And he is the governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart did what? Fainted, for he believed them not. Verse 27. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when they saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to carry him, what happened? The spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Beauty. It is your turn. Who is saying amen there? Yes. It is my turn. Yes. I don't know about you. I will experience beauty for ashes. Who is going to, if you are number two, shout hallelujah. <laughs> number one, where are you? Yes. Come on, shout aloud, hallelujah. Yes. In the name that is above every name. Before the end of the month of March, you will testify. Amen. Come on, come on. Let me hear your amen powerfully. Amen. I say it again. In the name that's above every name, you will testify. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What happened in this place? It's a story you are familiar with, aren't we? Jacob loved Joseph. You may want to ask, but why? Why? He loved Joseph because he's the first son of the woman he loved. Mm, you got it. When Jacob departed out of Padan Aram, as a result of the incident that happened, you know, between himself and his half brother, Esau. You remember that story? First, sold the birthright. Am I right? Next, number two. The blessing that was meant for Esau was transferred to Jacob. When he brought, you know, that uh, meat, not porridge, meat, savory meat. You remember? That the soul of Isaac loved. And when he ate that meat, the meat, it was Esau that was a hunter. It was Esau that Isaac sent for hunting to go and get him meat. Am I right? But then Rebekah, the mother, did what? Change the whole thing. Are we together? And told Jacob, go to the back of the house and get a kid and kill it. I will dress it and you will go and present it to your father. I hope you still remember. So Jacob presented the meat before Isaac the father. And Isaac said, how have you gotten it so quickly? Jacob quickly replied and said, your God has made it possible for me. Am I right? Now, the Bible said, Isaac did not discern him because he said, come near my son. Come near, let me feel you. Meanwhile, Mother Rebecca had put upon him the coats in the room of Esau, the hairy coat. So Isaac touched the body of Jacob. He thought it was hairy. Am I right? So Isaac said, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands at the hands of Esau. So he discerned him not. And therefore what happened? Isaac laid his hand upon him after eating the meat and the wine and began to bless him. Don't let us spend too much time there. After blessing Jacob, what happened? The Bible says as soon as Jacob came out of that room, Esau came in. And Esau said, my father, I, my father, rise, I have brought the savory meat, which is so much love. And Isaac said, who is that again? He said, I am Esau, your son. You sent me to get your meat. I brought you. Come and eat your meat. Come and eat this meat, my father. And bless me before you're dead. Isaac said, who had come before you 
Someone brought meat before you. I have eaten the meat. I have blessed him and he shall be blessed. So Esau, with lamentation, said, Is there no more blessing again remaining for me? You remember that soul, right? Now let's give the soul. After several years, Jacob ran. There was, there was, you know, a political plan, right? To transfer Jacob. So they quickly told him, because Esau came out of that room and vowed and said, I will wait until the day of the death of our father, and I will kill Jacob. So when the mother had it, what, the, what happened? They organized a transfer and said, Jacob, help me. Please help me. Where are the technical people? It was very okay yesterday. Now what happened? get it done quickly. Can I continue? Yeah. All right. Now, a transfer was organized for Jacob that took him to Padan Aram. Now, when he got to Padan Aram to stay with his uncle Laban, the first person that Jacob saw in Padan Aram was who? Rachel. The Bible described her as beautiful and fear completion and well favored. Thank you. I thought it's mine that has been disturbing me. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. So Jacob arrived at Padan Aram. You remember that story? Found Rachel, beautiful, well favored. And then there was a bargain, an agreement between himself and his uncle, Laban. What can I do for you to give me, Rachel, your daughter to wife? Serve me seven years. He served seven years. Bible says, and to him it was like few days because of the love he had for Rachel. After seven years, there was another coup. The marriage was conducted in the night. They put black veil on the face of Leah. And therefore, instead of giving Rachel, they gave Leah. And Jacob played with that woman throughout the night because in those days there was no electricity. <laughs> Hello? And he was just saying, oh, Rachel, I love you. Oh, then by the time he woke up the second morning and opened the door, what happened? Instead of a fair complexion, dark complexion. He ran out of the room and said, what is all this rubbish? Ran to the uncle, uncle, what is this? What have, what have I done? I served you for several years for Rachel. Why are you giving me another woman? Uncle said, please cool down. In this place, we don't give out the second daughter when the first one is not yet married. If, but if you still want her, serve me for another seven years. So this, the youth service continued. <laughs> and then we served for another seven. And then officially, Rachel was married. Leah was married. Now something happened again in that house. Bible says, and because God saw that Leah was hated, God opened the womb of Leah and shut up the womb of Rachel. So the one that was hated was just given birth with ease. Hello? Any single touch. Pregnancy. Any touch of favor. Bam. A touch of mercy. Bam. Are we getting me? So babies were just coming from Leah. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. The Bible said, when Rachel saw that she bear Jacob no child, she cried to her husband and said, what? Give me a child or else I die. After the whole drama, 
and discovered that this, this thing does not need fighting with my husband. Look, she looked around. Where is my housemaid? Go and sleep with our husband. Any child that comes out of you is as good as my own. So first one came out of the servant. Am I right? Out of the maid. Second one came. Leah woke up one morning and said, are you the only one that has a housemate? If you can give your housemate to our husband, where is my housemate? <laughs> Go and sleep with our husband. Because of the quarrel between the two of them. Hello? So two from first maid, two from another second maid. So seven plus four. That's how many? Eleven. Now this was not the plan of Jacob. Because Jacob's father, Isaac, was not a polygamy. He too decided, I just want to marry Rachel and have some few children. Am I right? Two, three, four, or five. Are we together? But now, because of the quarrel, because of the political game happening in the house, already there are 11 children in the house. One jumping up in the sitting room, another one in the bedroom, another one in the dining, some in the kitchen, everywhere filled with children. Hello? Now, the Bible now says something. After 11 children in the house, the Bible now said in Genesis chapter 30, verse 22, and God remembered Rachel. And God hearkened to her. And what happened? And God opened her womb, and she conceived and bare a son, and called his name what? Joseph. For she said, God had taken away my reproach. And she said, and God shall add to me another son. Can I prophesy into somebody's life? God shall add to you another miracle. Yeah. Who is receiving it? Receive it in the name of Jesus. Now this is where we are going to. The first child that came was Joseph. And because Joseph happened to be the first son of that woman, Rachel. Jacob loved him. So he sold him coats of many colors. And not just that Jacob loved Joseph, take note of this, God also loved him. Because God, in his original plan, every drama that happened in that house, happened as a result of God programming himself. Is somebody getting it? God, in the original plan, had it at the back of his mind when discussing with Abraham, Genesis chapter 15. When Abraham was without a child, God told Abraham, come out of your house. If you can number the stars of heaven, so shall your descendants be. They will be many and they will be great. Hello, are we together? So let's, let's hold on. Let's continue from that point. Now, Joseph too, being young, being favored, being brilliant, are we together? Suddenly so begin to have dreams. Beautiful dreams. You know those dreams. My, I, was, I was just in the farm. My chef stood upright. And all your own shoes made obeisance to me. Another time, they had the dream. They hated him. Another time, what happened? The moon, the sun, and 11 stars made obeisance to me. Which means the father, the mother, and all of you, my big brothers. All of you, you bow down before me. Please put your hands together for Pastor Emmanuel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you glad to receive Pastor Emmanuel Mephiene? God bless you, sir. Welcome. Mama, you're welcome. You are blessed in Jesus' name. You came at a very good time. Now, pay attention. Now, when Joseph had these wonderful dreams, what did the Bible say? The Bible said they hated him yet the more for his sins and for his dreams. And then one day, his father sent him to go and look after the well-being of their brothers. You know that story. And they spotted him coming from afar. Aha! Here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and see what becomes of his dream. So they conspire together 
And then somebody said, instead of us to kill, let us put him first in this pit. That's where we read tonight. Am I right? So when it was in the pit, they went doing their work. Then suddenly the Ishmaelites were coming, and then somebody suggested, instead of us killing him, let us send him out. So he was sold out, right? And then somebody now came back. When uh, Reuben came out and checked the pit, he was not there. He tore his clothes because he thought they have killed him. They did not tell him what happened. But at the end of the day, what happened? They stripped him of his clothes. They killed a kid. Used the clothes inside the blood. Am I right? Now this is where I'm going to. By the time they got home and showed their father, does this look like the garment of your son? Jacob, an old man, looked at the garment and said, this is the cloth of my son, Joseph. What happened? They told him, a wild beast had devoured him. He is no more. What? The son I loved, the first child of Rachel. So what did Jacob say? He said, I will cry a month till grave. That is, till I die, I will keep on mourning for Joseph to show how much love he had for him. But then, after 22 years, after how many years? Come and say, let me hear you. After 22 years, news came to Jacob that, Papa, your son is still alive. He said, what? What are you people talking about? What, kind, what manner of news is this? Who is still alive? They said, Papa, wake up. Je Joseph is still alive. The Bible said he did not believe them. You lied to me the first time that he has died. I am still mourning. Now, after 22 years, what are you talking about? But suddenly, when he looked up, what did he see? He saw the wagons coming from Egypt that they were bringing from Egypt to come and carry him and all the other family to Egypt. The Bible says his spirit revived. Many what? Beauty. It is somebody's turn. It is your own turn. Your spirit man will be revived. In the name that's above every name, before the end of this month of March, you will testify. I say somebody will testify. Who is going to be number one? Come on, shout hallelujah. Tonight, I want us to focus on what can make someone to experience a condition of ashes. What can lead us to the position of ashes? Remember everything that happened to Jacob that made him to experience that form of ashes happened as a result of conspiracy of his own children. Am I right? But thank God that Joseph did not die. Joseph was alive. Your dream will not die. Amen. Your dream will come alive. Amen. Who is saying amen? amen? Your vision will not die. Amen. Your vision will come alive. Amen. Come and say amen. Let me hear you. Amen. That revelation you got from God will not die. Amen. It will come alive. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? That plan that God has spoken to you about will not die. That plan will come to fulfillment. Everybody say amen. amen. So what can make someone experience the condition of ashes? Number one, when you put your hands into iniquity. Anytime sin is involved in our life, anytime you deviate from the pathway of God and you commit sin, the first thing you need to understand is there will be separation between you and God. And therefore, light will be off and darkness will set in. And when darkness sets in, Satan will set in. I hope you remember what we said yesterday. Satan went before God and said, Is Job serving you for nothing? You bless him. You prosper the works of his hand. You surrounded him. You built an edge round about him. And God said, okay, touch him, but don't touch his soul. And everything that Job had finished, 
destroyed. Are we together? Job did not commit sin. Now, but watch this. If anybody puts his or her hand into iniquity, what will happen? You return back to ashes. What did the Bible say? Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Please put it on the screen. What did he say? Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8 said, He that digget a pit shall fall into it. And whosoever breaketh an edge, the serpent shall bite him. You know the serpent there? Who is that serpent? The devil, Satan. Which means an edge has been built round about us by God. Now, if you break the edge, what will happen? You give permission to serpent outside to come in and bite. You know that's what happened to Adam and Eve? I hope you remember. After eating the apple, what did God do? God chased them out of the garden, out of the edge. And outside there, what is there? Serpent. And so many ravenous bees. So number one thing, take note very important, what can make somebody to experience a life of ashes or going back to ashes when you put your hand into iniquity? Number two, take note. Wrong association. Wrong association association or what we call evil company. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33. It says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Don't be associated with people that had evil. Don't go along with men and women that you discover that the two of you, you are not together. Bible said in Amos chapter 3 verse 3, can two work together except they be agreed? Which means whenever you are involved in some wrong company, wrong association, you begin to get wrong ideas, you begin to listen to wrong suggestions. Are we together? And they begin to give you wrong advice and they begin to direct you in the wrong way. And before you know what happened, you are out completely from the protection, from the defense of God. So number two, that will lead to experiencing ashes. Number three, what can make somebody again to experience a condition of ashes? Take note, very important. When you seek help from other gods, Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 3. Please put it on the screen. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 3. What did he say? Because of their wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods, whom they knew not, neither they ye nor your father. Which means God is provoked to anger whenever somebody goes to serve other gods. It be worship. Are we together? Going to the river to seek help. It is serving other gods. Going to have a list to help you check your future. Your future is in the hand of your maker. Somebody getting me? The harbor list is a man. Hello? One day he will die. Can I shock you with this news? Hear it. I've never told you in this place. Hear it. My father, before he passed on, my late father, he was attacked with partial stroke. There is a particular doctor that was helping my father, you know, with the medications. And we were paying, we were sending money to that doctor. My father would travel from our own hometown to the next town to go and meet the doctor who would do the massaging and, you know, help. The doctor died before my father. When they sent a message to me that that doctor, my father himself called me and said, my son, that doctor that has been helping me, yesterday I heard that he has died. Ah. They want helping you to do the massage. So we help you to do the massage now. <laughs> when we seek help from other gods, are we together? We are provoking God's Anger. And this can lead to ashes or living a life of 
ashes. Number four, are we together now? Sowing your seed in the wrong soil can lead to ashes. When you begin to sow your seed in the wrong soil, a practical example is Lot and his wife. They found themselves in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so what happened? They invested everything in life in Sodom and Gomorrah. What's the outcome? Disaster. Watch out where you sow your seed. Keep watch. Where are you sowing your seed? Is it in the right soil or on the good soil? If you sow your seed in a bad soil, definitely it will not yield any increase. I think that Gio gave a story of his own life during the Solemn Assembly. He said he would travel to America, and while he was in America, there is a particular ministry where he just loved to sow seed into that ministry. But he discovered that as he was sowing dollars, nothing was coming. Nobody's giving him dollars. Nobody's even coming around to say, Daddy, take dollars. Everything stands still. And he asked God one day, I said, Oh God, what's going on? I kept on sowing seed into this uh, ministry. Nothing is forthcoming. One day he had a dream. And that said, in that dream, he found himself in a farm that was cultivated, you know, like a yam farm. Huge, you know, tubers. I mean, what do we call it? Heaps of yam. So he just went to, he discovered that all these heaps, there was no seed coming out. So he now said, what's going on? Let me check. What? By the time he removed, used his hand, in that dream, and remove all the sand, he saw that Undone it was cement. I hope you know the meaning of that dream. You don't need any interpretation now. It means he has been sowing, not into the soil, but inside concrete. So there's no how that kind of seed will germinate. So when we sow our seed in the wrong soil, we experience ashes we experience a life of ashes, which means nothing good will come out of it. Are we together? Number five, take, take note again. What happened, or what can make somebody again experience a condition of ashes? Number five, when you are dwelling in a wrong location, Genesis chapter 13, verse 7 to 10. Genesis chapter 13, verse 7 to 10. Please take time and read some of these scriptures. Now, dwelling in a wrong location there is the story of Lot and his wife. Bible said there was a little strife between the herdsmen of Abraham and the herdsmen of Lot because Lot followed Abraham. I hope you remember that story. And Abraham said, my brother, he called Lot, my brother, let there be no strife between me and you. If you go to the right side, I go to the left. And if you choose to go to the left, I go to the right. But look, the land is before us. Choose. And the Bible says, and Lord lifted up his eyes and looked and saw a place well green and well watered. And he moved to that place. And he did not know it is the way to Sodom and Gomorrah. And they were dwelling in that place. This is, this, that city happened to be the first place where homosexuality is being practiced. Gay. Hello? To the extent that some of the men will come to Lot and say, we want to sleep with you. Wrong location. Take note of this. It is not everybody in UK that is okay. I want to Japan, I want to Japan, I'm going to US, I'm going to Canada, I'm going to Europe, I'm going to this, I'm going to that. Watch this. Make sure you hear from God before you relocate. It's not every location that is where your blessing is located. One of our provincial pastors in this land, in what here, invited me to Holland. They also call it Netherlands. Pastor Lassisi, some of you know him. They are settled there. So he invited me for a revival service. And when I traveled there, every evening, me and the family would be fasting. You know, he took me to different parishes of religion. So every evening, we would just be fasting, and then 
because the drive from the church to the house is two hours. But two hours, smooth road. Are we together? Now, one evening, as usual, mommy, as you say, we prepare food, we take to the church. One day, we got to the church. And as we are just settling down, open the office, settle down. One brother just walked into the office and said, Mommy, you are welcome. Aha, uh-huh, brother, so and so, how are you? He said, Mommy, I have been waiting for you because I know you will bring food. I have not eaten since in the morning and I'm not fasting. I looked at Mommy last. I said, In Netherlands, this kind of thing is happening. I thought this is a place where food is everywhere. Mommy told him and said, The food I brought here is for the man of God. So that after the ministration, while we are traveling back, he will be eating his food and my husband too will be eating. So you cannot partake. He, he said, Mommy, except you want me to collapse here. In Europe, where many of us want to travel to? You want to hear another one? I am not saying don't go. I am only saying pray and get direction from God. The first time I traveled to the U.S., I went to New York. Now, when I went to New York, the brother I was staying with, together we've been using taxis to move from different places, you know, took me to different locations, including where the twin, twin building was, you know, burned by Osama bin Laden. You know, remember that story? So, took me to different wonderful places. One day, he now said, sir, let us go through the train station. He said, today I want you to experience the train, the railway uh, movement in the U.S. I said, fine, that's a good one. So together we went to the train station. To my amazement, I saw so many people seated down at the railway station. And then as we were going, they were now calling me. Excuse me, excuse me. No, 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 no. So I asked him, I said, what are they saying? He said, they are begging. I said, in America? I said, you mean there are beggars in America? He said, there are beggars everywhere. I said, I don't know. I thought America is a place where you land and there is money everywhere. I said, no, no, no. What happened if you land in America and you have been struggling to get visa several times, you now manage to land in the U.S. And then somebody grabbed me and said, please help me with money. <laughs> what will you say? I also come here to look for money. <laughs> So, take note, very important. What can make someone experience a condition of ashes when you are dwelling in a wrong location? Therefore, please watch this. You will need to find out, oh God, where do you want me to stay in life? You can stay in worry here, and God will bless you mightily. Are we together? You can stay in the north and God will bless you abundantly. You'll be amazed. There are some people who say, no, I don't want to go to the north. No. I was transferred. I was also in the same, I have the same mentality. When I got a job in Lagos, I wanted to remain in Lagos like others. But when I got my first transfer, it was to Kaduna. From Kaduna again, I thought they would return me back to Lagos. Kaduna to Kano. It was in Kano. Somebody blessed me with my first car. Hello, are we together? After our wedding, he blessed me with the first car. The name of the car, page 505. <laughs> I'll do that now. But very solid that time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. As at that time, page 505 was a solid car. A car that I drove to my, my parents. My father said, you? Very solid then. Are we together? But yet, it was in the north. Not in Lagos. So be in the right location. The right blessing will locate you. Let's move. Now, number six, what can make someone experience a condition of ashes? Taking wrong decisions. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 10 to 14. Second Samuel chapter 13. Sorry, yeah, chapter 13, verse 10 to 14. Please, when you get back home, read all these stories. Now, what, what do I mean by taking wrong decisions? Look up, watch this. There are so many people in life today who are taking some major wrong decisions, especially in the area of marriage. 
many had never survived it. There are some whose ministry has collapsed because of a decision on who to marry. There's a case in my hand right now, man of God. It's a case of one of our very solid and sound pastor. He was a pastor of Acme, RCCG, in Ikeja. But he was very young when he was a parish pastor. Handsome, good looking. And so he saw this lady too in the parish. I wish he, he could listen and copy my example. When I was pastoring one of our churches in Kano, I happened to be the first pastor of the first model parish in Kano, which is now the regional headquarters. When I was pastoring that church, within two years, our church grew from the 11 of us that started the church in the hotel to 400 within two years. And God told me one day and said, your wife is not in this church. And there are beautiful ladies. Am I not in trouble? <laughs> Young, I mean, youth coppers, doctors, lawyers. Who came to Redeem Christian Church of God Royal Party in an hotel, very beautiful hotel? They were just trooping, coming in. And we were together. And God told me emphatically, because I was not married, your wife is not here. So, Hugo, where is my wife? At the appointed time, I will tell you. But that other brother I was telling you about, maybe he did not, maybe he was also carried along. So many beautiful ladies. Hello, thank God for our beautiful sister. Please put your hands together for young, beautiful sister. So he carried one of them. Hello. Or he snatched. Brother. Eh? Are we together? After several years. One day, this lady went and rent another house in an undisclosed location to the husband and moved their three daughters. Paid for the house and, and moved there. And the husband went to the old house and discovered there is nothing in the house. Eh? This is somebody that, by the grace of God, I made him from being a worker, Sunday school teacher, I brought him to the altar as a minister. Many people told him, this lady you want to marry, she's not a pastor material, she's not a pastor's wife material. But he said, no, you know, it's just that you people don't like her, she's good. Ah, if she had the microphone to sing, ha, ha. Everywhere will be filled with anointing. Ah! To cut the long story short, to cut the long story, he picked, he picked her up. One day he came to my house in the car. Myself and my wife, we, we sat him down after eating. What really happened? How did you make this mistake? Unfortunately, many people who are far, far his junior are provincial pastors. Today, he has left not just Zona Pastor. Anywhere he say he wants to pass the church, they say, Where is your wife? And he has called the wife several times. Where are you? Come and meet me. The one said, I am not coming to redeem Christian Church of God again. You are not yet married. Congratulations. If you're a brother and you're not yet married, double congratulations. You know why? Once you carry her, you have carried her. You carry both the, the liability and the credit, and that's it. And if you're a sister, you are not yet carried, congratulations. Once you say, I go, they follow you, they go. You, you follow both the liability I go, they follow you, they go. Just they play.
Number seven. Are you getting something there? These are situations that will lead to experiencing ashes. Finally, number seven. Deliberate disobedience to the voice of God. When you are hearing God speaking to you, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 13 to 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 13 to 15. When you hear God repeatedly saying something to you, it means you are to hear diligently. You are to obey the voice of the Lord. I don't know my, many married women today who are thinking, if I had known, I would not have married this man. Many. Am I right? Yes. Wrong decision. Now, this one, deliberate disobedience to the voice of God. Now, look at Mama uh, MFN. Okay, look at the husband. Is she not favored? Now, listen to this. It's not only her that is favored. In Matthew, is favored. Though. Your pastor is favored. He that... Pastor, you are favored. Watch this. God bless you, sir. I have, I have had two cases by the grace of God in this church. I have found a case where a man came to me in the church and said, Daddy, I've come to report my wife to you. I said, what happened? He said, my wife slapped me two times. <laughs> Yesterday. I said, what have you done? I said, are you sure of what I said? He said, Daddy, you know we're in the church. I dare not lie. I was still sleeping when, he, when she gave me two dirty slaps that I should wake up and go and look for a job. Like bread and tea. Any in the morning. One on the right and... Nobody wise me that. Have you ever slapped your husband? Have you ever slapped your husband? Never, never. God forbid. It will never happen, man. But this woman, when this man was telling me, I hope you know I dare not lie. I'm standing before God. When this man told me about this, he said, I said, are you sure of what you are saying? She said, daddy, don't worry. I will show you my husband. And this, I will show you my wife. And the man I'm talking to you is tall and huge. So on Sunday, on Sunday, I, when, I, when he came to me, I now said, where's your wife? I remember, where's your wife? He now went and called When I saw this woman, <laughs> please, ma, please, ma, stand up. Yes. Did you, did you, it's okay. Did you see this woman? Slim, slender, am I right? The man that this kind of woman slap, tall and huge. See that man, God bless you, mommy. You know, when they brought the woman to me, I looked at her, I said, ah, wait a minute. You are the one that slapped this man? She busted into laughter. <laughs> she was just laughing. Very sm smallish stature. The husband, tall, huge, fat. The husband now told me, I said, Daddy, if I were to beat my wife, where do you think she will end? <laughs> Is somebody getting me? Excuse me. Why am I saying this? This kind of a thing can result into experiencing ashes. But there's a good news tonight. God can turn our ashes to beauty. Let's go back to that story. When the first news came to Jacob and said, Joseph has been devoured by wild animals. The Bible said what? He began to weep. And he was in sorrow. And he was in pain. He was broken hearted. Am I right? Shattered. Scattered. Devastated. Discouraged. Disappointed. And he said, I will mourn the death 
of my son, the grief. After several years, which means all those years he has been as a father to them. He has just been managing life. Am I right? For 22 years. Everybody take note. For 22 years, this man has been in sorrow, has been in pain. His heart has been broken. And watch this. There's something I learned about that story. Hidden. All the brethren that conspired together, they agreed and said, nobody should tell their father what happened. That's the beginning of courtism. <laughs> Hello? Did you get what I said? Man of God, if I were to be among the brethren, I would go and whisper to my father. I would say, Daddy, it's not true. We didn't kill him. We sold him. But nobody's up. Not a single one went back to tell their father that daddy, a white bridge, did not kill him. So that this man can be comforted. But everybody kept quiet. For how long? 22 years. Man of God, watch this up. When the brethren of Joseph came to Egypt and they told them, before you can buy anything in this land, there's a man you need to see. It is only this man that can give the approval. And they got before Joseph. Bible says, Joseph recognized his brethren, but they knew him not. Are we together? So Joseph harassed them and said, you be spies, all of you. You have come to spy this land. That's what you have come to do. And they said, we are not spies. We are 11 brothers. And one is no more. Telling Joseph that one of us is no more. That is, one of us have died in the presence of one who is not dead. If I were to be the one, what will you do? I would have said, please give them 10, 10 strokes of king for even telling lies before me. For even telling lies before me, where are the soldiers? Please give all of them 60 strokes of king or 10, 10 or 12, 12. But everything that happened, happened according to the plans of God. That's why I know every area you have been experiencing ashes, it will, it will turn to beauty. Your sorrow will become beauty. Who is saying amen? Let me hear your amen. You know why? Weeping may endure the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I see you experiencing joy this morning. Come and say amen louder. Sorrow does not last forever. Weeping does not last forever. As long as God is involved in the story of our life, you will laugh. You will rejoice. You know something? When they now finally told Jacob, that daddy, stand up, your son, Joseph, is alive. He is the governor over the whole land of Egypt. He said, what? What are you talking about? The Bible says, his spirit man was revived. Came back to life. Are you serious? Are you sure what you are saying? Are you serious? After 22 years, what are you people talking about? Then suddenly he lifted up his eyes and he saw wagons. I'm talking of station wagons. Are we together? Coming from Egypt. Hello? to carry this man and everybody down to Egypt. When they saw Joseph, not only did he embrace him, the Bible says he embraced him and wept on his shoulder. Beauty for you are next in line. Shall we rise up on our feet? It is your turn. You will rejoice. Everything that I've given you sorrow in time past, God will turn them to joy. Everything that has made your heart broken, God will turn it to beauty. Can you please lift up your two hands to heaven and say, Father, I thank you. Father, I worship you. Father, I praise you. Please let me hear your voice. Let the Lord hear your voices. Father, I give you the praise. I give you the honor. I magnify you. I exalt you. I lift you high. I praise your name. You are the pillar that holds my life oh, 
you are the pillar that puts my life. Master Jesus, you are the pillar that holds my life. You are the master, master Jesus, Jesus, you are. Some prayers. Are you ready? Very powerful prayers. Please get ready. Tonight, God will answer all our prayers. Where's your amen? amen? Number one prayer is a shout. A shout to announce to God that, oh God, tonight you must answer me. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah! I am sure you can do better. Somebody shout a loud hallelujah. Good. Now lift up your right hand wherever you are, everybody, with a loud voice. Say, Father, every pain, every sorrow in my life, let them give way to peace and comfort in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth wide and pray that prayer. Father, every pain, every sorrow in my life, let them give way today to peace, to comfort. Open your mouth wide and pray that prayer. I am tired. I am tired of sorrow. I am tired of pain. Oh God. Oh God. Every sorrow and pain in my life, let them give way to peace, to comfort. Can you pray that prayer? Let the Lord hear your voices. Every sorrow, every pain in my life. Oh God, by reason of your word tonight, let them give way to peace and comfort. Turn my ashes into beauty. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lift up your right hand again with a loud voice, everyone with a loud voice. Say, Father, Father, every shame in my life, every reproach of my life, turn them around to beauty. Open your mouth wide and pray that prayer. Every shame, every reproach, Father, turn it around. 
let me experience a turnaround. Oh God, let me experience a turnaround. Oh God, let me experience a turnaround. Turn around my shame. Turn around the reproach. Turn around every pain. Oh God, let me experience beauty again. Beauty again. Beauty again. Beauty again. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The last prayer, lift up your right hand again. Finally, the last prayer. Say, Father, Father every, conspiracy every conspiracy against my life, scatter it. Scatter it. Open your mouth while I pray that prayer. Father, every manner of conspiracy against my life, against my marriage, scatter them tonight. Every conspiracy that will take me to the position of ashes, Father, scatter it. Conspiracy from men, conspiracy from evil men, conspiracy from staff, conspiracy from agents of darkness that will take me to the position of ash or ashes. Father, scatter them, 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 scatter them. Oh God, scatter them. Only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. everybody to heaven and say, Father, what only you can do, turn the impossibility to possibility, reversing the irreversible, what only you can do, do it in my life. Where is your prayer? Father, what only you can do, reversing the irreversible, turn the impossibility to possibility. What only you can do, Father, do it in my life. I promise I will testify. I promise I will testify. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. All eyes closed, please. I beg of you, everyone, please close your eyes. You are here tonight. You have heard this word of life. You believe that God has spoken to you tonight. But there is a secret sin in your life that will not allow God to turn around your situation. You know it. I don't know it. Your pastor may not know it. But you know it. And of course, you know God knows about it. But tonight, you want to say, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry, oh God. Have mercy on me. Wherever you are, you know that God has spoken to you tonight. You need to say bye-bye to every form of secret sin. Please come to my front. Let me pray for you. Come. I'm waiting for you. Come. 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 God bless you, brother. Are you coming? Come. Anyone?
Did you see anyone coming from somewhere? Okay. Now everyone lift up your two hands. Let me pray for you. As I pray for you tonight, I want to hear a loud and a powerful amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you for this second day of this program. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you call you are doing. Thank you for your word. You have spoken to us. You have spoken your mind to us. I ask, Heavenly Father, for every one of these, your children have heard the word tonight. Turn their sorrow to joy. Every ugly situation, everything that represents ashes in their life, Father, make them to become beauty. Beautify their lives. Beautify their homes. Beautify their business. Those without a job, Father, provide for them. Those who are currently in wrong association, Father, disconnect them. Those who are currently in wrong location, Father, reposition them. In the name of Jesus, let your glory descend. Let your glory radiate upon every one of these your children. I prophesy into your life, whatever you lay this your hand upon shall prosper. It shall be well with you. God will give you direction. God will guide you. God will promote you. God will bless you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let me hear amen three times. Amen.